Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Elias Hönig. I studied at uh, GASK, the School of Arts, and I did media arts, so that's a little bit uh, my background. Tonight I will be presenting to you uh, Lightkeeping. Um, it's a, well, it's a camera. Uh, it's a, a small camera that I made myself. Um, and it's not intended to be competing with other cameras, professional commercial cameras that are around. Um, it's a bit of an, yeah, an art project, not a very technical, capable kind of thing. Um, so I will walk you through the process of like developing the camera, the, some results that I made of, uh, of it. Um, so the, yeah, instead of, of trying to replicate a, digi a digital camera, by myself, like um, create like a um, like a CCD on my own, like find ways to do these kind of things. Um, I started by reducing uh, the idea of the digital camera. Normally, you have like these um, commercial, uh, yeah, your regular DSLR cameras have, has plenty of these megapixels laying around. Um, so I started reducing my uh, my approach to that. Um, so my camera has actually a resolution of one one pixel. Um, the result of the images of my camera uh, are not one pixel images. That would be a bit too, uh, too hardcore maybe. Um, so I decided to, uh, to just, that the output of the images would be uh, more kind of um, regular uh, HD, HD images. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the way of working is very different. Ooh, equi. Um, instead of uh, capturing an image at one instant, uh, in one flash, uh, my camera captures an image over time, pixel by pixel, one by one. So you can imagine it kind of takes, takes a while to take a picture. Um, the way the camera works is by means of a very simple pan and tilt axis. So the camera starts left up, so uh, the same as and the same as you read a, a book, it goes line per line per line per line, going every pixel row from the top down until the image is finished. Um, so the it's a it's a sensor with a resolution of one pixel. So at the, every measurement can fill in the place of one pixel element on your screen. Um, and so during the process of taking one picture, the pen and tilt uh, head visits every possible location of all those pixel coordinates and takes one very simple measurement. Um, <clears throat> uh, instead of going uh, f for a sensor that works with light or that, that uh, triggers, um, that captures light, I uh, started the, the project with a sensor that um, measures distance. Um, to me, it's more a, a clear, uh, a more clear approach, a very base, a very basic thing um, that you can do. Um, because if you wanted to uh, capture uh, light for for uh, the information of one pixel, you would need a lens set or maybe like a telescope that's moving stuff like this. And then the whole like idea of a camera would disappear a little bit into a, a more kind of a, an installation kind of thing. Um, so that's, yeah, my starting point was like, what if I take a very simple measurement that relates to space and I do it over and over and over again until I have a matrix filled with those um, measurements. And I was like in my, in my head just imagining like this should be um, giving me an image, a sort of an image or sort of a spatial impression, I guess. I had no clue uh, whatsoever what the result would, would be. So I bought a distance sensor, like a small uh, ultrasonic distance sensor that you can find pretty easily. And then I put it on like a small pan and tilt head and I started scanning away. Um, so this is the, the first prototype uh, I started with. It is incredibly easy. So this is, the, this is the pan axis, like a small stepper motor here, a small stepper motor there, the tilt axis. And this is the small um, uh, in, in, uh, ultrasonic distance sensor. Um, and then some rubbish down there. 
So it works. Um, maybe not, not everybody uh, knows about distance sensors. So it works the same way a dolphin can orient itself or a bat. So it sends out a little sonic pulse. It's higher than them we can hear. So it's ultrasonic. But imagine it's like a small beep, like bleep. So you hear how the space reacts to it. So the, the, the sound wave starts uh, close to my mouth and then it like propagates through the air and it reflects back here and here. And so uh, um, due to experience, I know where I am in the space by just listening. The same is true for the sensor. Um, and it, yeah, therefore it can know the, the distances. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so the, it's a little bit, imagine, imagine like a blind person entering a space he's never been before. So he's trying to, to, to orient himself in space by, by sound. And I sometimes imagine the, uh, this, like, let's say this is a camera, right? Because that's actually what it is. Uh, it's a camera and um, it's more like a sensor, like a probe, so like a little antenna that kind of touches the, the, the yeah, its surroundings rather than just passively gathering light at a certain instance. So here, this, this is the, my, uh, my first uh, run of the camera. Left you see Arduino talking to the scanner, to the right you see uh, processing, um, creating an image from, uh, from the data, and in the center you see the image. So s this is the result. This is my first image that I created ever. Maybe I'll enlarge it for you just a little. So you can see it's pretty rough. There are some, some, kind, of, yeah, some kind of differences. I think this is a scan from uh, a part of my sofa in my house, I think. Not a very glorious subject. Um, um, next, I tried uh, to to work with a, an interactive version that builds up like line per line, and you can see the the image visually like growing, make, yeah, becoming from one line to more kind of an image. This tended to slow down the process even more, which was a bit irritating. I was thinking of putting this into a sort of a an installation where people could, over time, uh, see an image growing. That's one of the possibi possibilities. And then I did some uh, a, a series of, I think, three or four or five, uh, no, probably four scans. So this is what came out of the camera, pretty, um, pretty much as is. Um, this was a scan of my computer screen, and on speaker left, speaker right, and then some cables here. I have no idea where the, these kind of shapes came from. Um, it's not, uh, it's, yeah, it's only on a few of those scans. On the other, it's not there, I'm not sure. But one thing you can see pretty clearly is like these, um, these sharp lines. So the image is built up in, in these blocks, really, like very, very little grayscale information. So in Photoshop, I uh, added some more detail by just playing with the levels a little bit. So this is all the detail there is in, in, in the image. Um, very rough, very abstract. Um, it confused me and it was like, this is not what I'm after. And then this is, of course, a very stupid way of thinking. So you start by um, uh, um, challenging yourself by, um, by creating this little machine that would surprise you, of course, with the results. And then you should take the result or do something with the result. But I had something in mind already, what, the, what this camera could or should do. Uh, and this was kind of conflicting with that. So, um, but still, I made some other images. Um, so this is, a, I put the camera like right in front of a, a palm plant, obviously. So there is a bit more detail, uh, yeah, I guess. Some, yeah, some patches. This is pretty cool, like here, repetitive, uh, repetitive p pattern. Oh, maybe down there too. I have no idea how these things form. And then this is another scan, and with this image I decided, yeah, like this is not the way I want to go further with this. For example, anyone has an idea what this is? It's not a self-portrait. So this is my desk over there somewhere, 
that is a bed of my room, and then this is the top of a bottle of wine. So it's pretty hard to tell. Um, so I, did, I wanted to take distance from these very abstract images, although kind of fun, you know, you can imagine like a bat seeing uh, its surrounding like this, or uh, a little bit. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was, I was pleased with the idea of, of um, having this super simple sensor, this super simple setup, like just a camera, like panning left, right, top, bottom, um, uh, the sensor panning, um, creating like a, a kind of a complex whole um, by, by just uh, repetitive, very simple actions. That's something I really like. And actually it is this simple, um, the process is this simple that you can do it yourself. For example, you can take a, um, a tape measure and you can um, go sit on a chair, like this desk chair that turns, and you can just look at its spot and then start unrolling the, the tape measure until it hits something, like for example that pillar over there. And then when it does, I take a piece of paper and I write down my coordinates, like I'm pointing there. And then, okay, this is the distance that I read onto the tape measure. And then I turn a little bit further, I do the same thing over and over and over. You get the point, I guess. Um, and then at the end, I would have like a sheet of paper full of these irritating, boring uh, uh, numbers. Uh, but if you interpre interpret these, then you get like these kind of images. So I really like the idea that you use the computer just because it doesn't get bored. So I, did, I, I wanted to take distance from these, um, these abstract images and I was thinking I need more direction. So as everyone knows, like sounds of a, of a low frequency go kind of circular, go uh, like a sphere outwards from its source. Um, the, the, the ultrasonic sound, like the higher you go in frequency, the more direct the sound is. So the, ultra, the, the ultrasonic sound is pretty direct, but as you can see, it's still not sharp enough. So I needed to go up in frequency. Um, so I thought, okay, let's um, let's work with light. Light is way more, uh, way higher frequency, way higher uh, directionality. So um, uh, so I thought I should go um, experiment a little bit with a laser. Um, I searched around and found a, a South African guy promoting uh, a chip that he made by making a module around this chip um, that was like a, a laser ranger. The cool thing about it is it's not um, the same, uh, yeah, the procedure to work with it is very different than, for example, hacking um, uh, a distance measure, uh, measuring tool for in construction sites or something like this. Um, it's pretty open, the documentation was open. Um, uh, it is meant to be uh, a research tool, so that's cool. Um, <clears throat> the downside of it, though, is um, this is a this is laser that you can see. Normally, you wouldn't see it; it's invisible. I really like the idea of seeing the laser beam because that's a kind of a theatrical element. Like, if the camera is scanning, uh, it would change the space because, like, it's it's present. Like this whole in this whole. Um, yeah, it kind of dissects the space, it kind of probes the space, and I quite like that idea. <clears throat> uh, so it's not visible, and it's, yeah, maybe you wouldn't recognize this as a laser beam, more like this, these typical laser pointers are very thin and sharp. Um, this one isn't. It's a, a very safe laser class because you don't see it. If you stare into the beam, then like suddenly you get blind and you don't know why. Um, so this is the, la the safest laser class there is, I think 1M or something, I'm, okay, I guess I forgot. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it is a pretty powerful laser, but it's, it's very, the energy is spread across a large surface, so it's safe. Uh, the downside of that is that it's, uh, it is directional, it keeps its direction, but it doesn't, um, yeah, like every kind of detail in, in pretty close to the camera gets kind of fluffy and blown up and stuff. So it's uh, something I didn't really want to. So my second prototype, um, da, 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 da. my second prototype uh, looked like this. This was the design for it. Um, <clears throat> as a, si a similar system, it's just a motor here, pan, motor there, tilt, and then this is the laser module that I found. 
and then just some interface uh, elements to the Arduino. Uh, as you can see, this is essentially a LiDAR system. LiDAR stands for light, uh, light, uh, light radar, yes. Um, and you know these commercial, um, there are like these commercial installations that you put down and after a minute you have like this very detailed scan of your surroundings. Um, so LiDAR, you connect LiDAR with the uh, idea of 3D and 3D environments. Um, this is very different though. I wanted it to be connected to photography. So I wanted to, st to, to stay connected to the idea of the frame. Uh, and so everything I do is, is still in 2D, two dimensions. Uh, so the, the software is also just working with a very simple X and Y coordinate. Here I'm in time lab trying to um, put every little piece together. I designed the, the model in Blender, which is not ideal to do this, but uh, it worked out pretty okay. Um, yeah, so this is the module. Uh, so the laser would go out here through the lens, collimate it, and then uh, bounce back somewhere in the in the environment. Uh, and scatter the light switch, scatter around, and then it would eventually also uh, end up here. Uh, at the end of the tube, there is a um, an avalanche photo diode, uh, and then the cool thing is you have this little apartment of uh, PCBs here, uh, and you can you can interface with it. You can really um, kind of dial in the, the, the sensitivity a bit, a little bit like, like playing around with a camera. Uh, like for example, um, putting in more sensitive film, stuff like this. Um, it's a very bad design though. Uh, after a while it, it didn't, um, it did show its um, uh, faults. For example, it's top heavy. Uh, so it's the, all the weight is on top, and there's only oh yeah, it's on the other side. There's only a small gear, and the gear ratio with the gear on the motor is uh, uh, way too little. The motor had to be uh, uh, too powerful, um, had to be uh, working too hard the whole time. So uh, accidentally, uh, when I uh, on one scan, um, I was working at Kask, and I, I came visiting the, the camera again after a, an hour or so, and it was like kind of strangling itself around its, its power core, so it was pretty sad to see. Um, this is the next step, just uh, interface it with the Arduino, the motor, the stepper drivers, and then this red thing is a data log board. Um, it's just a simple as a mini or micro SD card where, um, where the data is stored. So it's a very, um, very basic design to work with. Um, I made some cool scans with it though. But as you can see, it's not very rain or wind or other people. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's not very good for that. So yeah, this is the final thing. And this is the first image I made with this scan, uh, with this prototype. I think it's a corner. A second image. Anyone? It's a speaker. So you, you can see the, the immense change of detail, right? By just stepping up the frequency, instead of seeing, the, seeing these very abstract blobs, now you have something, kind, some kind of a, you, you can see this is a hard edge and stuff. But there is also this kind of noise uh, that you can see. It's a bit in a wavy pattern. Um, but I really, I was really pleased to see that because it kind of really relates to photography or like this, this, this ancient, yeah, yeah, old, old photography. And over time, uh, while keeping working on these images, uh, it appeared to me that it's, uh, that it's really like building a bridge between like really, um, yeah, hardcore digital. I mean, how more hardcore can you get than one pixel? Uh, and then like the, the first moments of photography where people were really curious to, um, to grasp, uh, um, yeah, how to say, to, to grasp um, the way a space appears on a flat plane, like to, 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 to keep it, to, yeah, this really um, enthusiasm of, of, the, of that period. Um, so, so this project for me, it kind of bounces in between those two, um, the, 
those two times. My third image, I have no idea what this is uh, anymore. It must be somewhere in my room, I guess. Uh, so, um, so this is what's stored on the SD card. It's just a simple text file, and then you would have X coordinate, just the, the, the column of, of your image, the column, and then this is the uh, Y coordinate, just the row of the image, and then you would simply have distance information in meter. Um, so super basic. Uh, it's only after a while that I thought of this, this file um, as being this um, uh, a digital kind of negative image. So you would have, you would make the image, the scan, and then the result would be the, the negative, which is not really an, really an image. Every information is in there, but this is, this is it. You don't really um, easily see an image in this. Maybe if you train enough, you can try um, to, to, to get an idea of what you're seeing here. Um, but uh, just the same way with analog photography, um, you have um, multiple possible um, uh, positive pictures that you can develop from the negative. And it's the same story here. So, um, yeah, it's something I, I just discovered while working with it. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll run you through some uh, examples that I made. So this is one of the earlier scans um, out of my view out of my window. So this is a curtain, this is my windowsill. You can see some bicycles over there, the door, the window, stuff like that. Same thing, different angle. So you can see the window still here. Uh, and then, yeah, this is a street, there are some buildings. You can clearly see some distance here. So this is closer by, this is further away. And then this thing is a car. So the, this is the front side of the car with the boot open. And then after a while, the car left. So this shows how the image is built up, like from the top down. I think this would take about four hours to build. One small thing, it's a bit of a self-portrait, is here, those two blobs. Those are the, the, the two lenses of the camera when it's reflected in a, in a, um, yeah, in a window. So this is the result of a, of a scan I made outside, the first scan I made outside. It was, the weather was good, uh, and I wanted to try um, some kind of natural elements rather than just concrete all, all over the place. Um, so what I did was I went out to the Citadel Park, which is really close to where I live. I put the camera there with a the battery, and then I just sat on a bench for four hours, waiting until the camera was finished. I would not advise this, uh, to do this. Um, so the, after a while, it, yeah, it was apparent that the camera wasn't um, durable enough um, or uh, strong enough or reliable enough because I couldn't really leave it alone. Uh, so I thought of a, of a new design, like another um, Blender session, uh, maybe like a little, little bit like this, separating the tilt from the pan, putting the weight down a little bit, increasing the, the, the ratio of the gears. Um, but instead I went for this kind of approach. Um, and I'll show you the, the camera now. It's the model that I'm working with now. So I'll just show it to you real quick. Can I get the cable far enough? Okay, I'll try. Yeah, so the, the, this material is just for, uh, for sun protection, that it doesn't overheat, and rain protection. Um, so I'll quickly just, just make a picture here. Okay. 
So this this red dot is is uh, is not a laser light. It's just like a uh, kind of some kind of aid for me to know where the camera is pointing, and also to note people that there is like, like an invisible, well, there is like a laser beam. So everybody smile. <laughs> well, not really, because uh, yeah, like one HD image uh, would take. Um, well, it depends, but one HD image can can be as fast as four days, which is a uh, which is which is doable, really. So I'll make I quickly make an image here. So um, first, like in the menu, I set my max ma maximum range. So instead of a regular camera where you have um, a default view to infinity, this one says, "Oh, now I can do an image maximum to eight meters, or." Uh, 31 meters or 78 meters, stuff like this. In theory, I can go to 360 meters, but the further I go, uh, the longer the yeah the recording buffer of the uh, yeah the longer the buffer runs, and the longer it takes for every uh, pixel to scan. To give you an idea, to to scan one pixel with an eight, eight uh, maximum of eight meters is um, is like like this fast for every pixel, so it's pretty doable. But like for 360 60 meters, you're doing one measurement per per pixel, kind of uh, per second, kind of. And then for one HD image, which is around two million seventy thousand um, uh, pixels, well, it adds up. Um, so I select my range. Let's say let's keep it easy here. Maximum of eight meters. I go back and then I see. Oops. My resolution. Let's go with something pretty small, 400 by 250 pixels. Uh, that's about it, I guess. And then I can set my left top point. Let's put it here. And then, so now it's drawing its frame. So I have a kind of a clue what it's kind of. What the picture is going to to be, what the frame is going to be. When I'm happy, I click OK and I click Start. Being a very bad programmer, now all the information goes from the Arduino controller board to the laser module in a very basic, simple way. <clears throat> and now the camera starts with the first row from the left up to the right. I suggest we don't wait for, for it to finish. So I'll, I'll quickly run you through the, um, the building process. The camera, this thing kind of started with this, um, like uh, RS components, some more, some etching, some soldering, some Weirwaring. Um Yeah, so I, I laser cut some acrylic and put some stuff in there. I interfaced uh, a serial communication on the uh, on the communication board of the laser ranger, and then everything goes neatly in a box. So lots of cables. And then I was thinking of rain protection, so maybe like a whole like plastic bag, and with some uh, little like thing in front of it. But I ended up with uh, putting like this thing on it. This is, this is more uh, practical. And so then I have a, a working camera. Uh, so here is it's making a scan uh, outside in the rain, a pretty successful scan. Um, but yeah, a working camera? No, actually, no. Um, so when your camera is almost working, then uh, you have to test it um, and test it uh, and test some more and some more and some more. And the, th the thing you see here is like these graphs. I used a lot of plots uh, because the data it, it generates is like simple data and serially. So it means like a lot of this simple data. And you can plot that pretty easily. And that's uh, pretty fun to do, and so this is actually a plot of one image. Um, so you have like width information, uh, and instead of y information, you have distance information here. 
Um, so the, uh, the X and the Y are overlaid here, and then this is the distance information. The cool thing is you can see this is a pretty healthy um, sp uh, spread of uh, the information, the scan information. You have some errors above, you can see, but all, all uh, is pretty okay. So for example, this is a, a scan that is not very interesting. It's mostly black with, some, with, with two shades of gray noise. Um, <clears throat> But as you can tell, I use a lot of these plots in my uh, in my process to to build the camera, and it appears to me to it appeared to me that um, the images that, that came out of the camera and the plots were kind of similar in a way. They were both walking this line between an image that is made for people and an image that is made for computers, or like made by computers without uh, thinking of anything else. So like this image, like data, very graphical. It's almost like a map. It's a, it's a, it, it's a schematic. Like the images as well. It's a schematic. You saw it with a car. It, it's a, it's not something that's natural for us. It's very technical, machine kind of thing. Um, luckily for us, it's it's pretty. Uh, it, it resembles an image pretty clearly, but it's still um, uh, a schematic. Um, and I quite like the uh, the crossover between the schematic to map. And, uh, and an image. Uh, I like to think about the camera as a surveyor, like um, this, this guy who measures landscapes and makes maps of, out of them, because it's kind of what they do. They also use these laser lights, and they also can and kind of have the, their beacons in, in, the, in the landscape uh, before they make, uh, yeah, while they're doing their measurements. Um, OK, I'll, uh, I'll quickly go um, uh, over this. So I was making scans like I'm doing now, which is interesting. Um, but then I uh, noted that there were like these kind of machine artifacts in it. For example, can we go back? Let me check real quick. Da, 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 da. Like here, you see these artifacts here, like these small <laughs> horizontal lines. So the camera is moving like this. And for example, a person walking by at a normal speed is like small dots, only one or two pixels are affected. Somebody standing or walking with the laser motion uh, gets something like that. That could be a bird, maybe someone leaning out of the window. Um, so working line by line, it, the, the image had this kind of machine property for me. And while it's cool, it's too. It was too at the time. It was too um, technical for me. You, you you had to know a little bit about the whole process in order to, uh, well, yeah, enjoy the image. Um, <clears throat> so I thought if I build up my image not line per line from the left up to the right bottom, but instead um, visiting all the positions in the in the grid um, in a random fashion, that would generate the same errors would be would, would still be there, but they would be like spread. Uh, spread around in a more natural kind of way, I think. And, and I, I hoped that it would kind of um, feel more natural and, and make this gap between like digital and analog photography way more closer. Uh, so I started to, um, I thought it wasn't a big deal, like just changing the, the behavior of the camera to um, the linear behavior to a random behavior, but I was, uh, I was wrong. Uh, it is in fact, it was in fact pretty hard. For example, the um, the memory of the Arduino Mega that I used there uh, is not big enough to just hold a um, to hold an array uh, of of around above two million positions. It's just too big. Because I was thinking, like, just generate a random number between zero and about two million seven seventy thousand. Um, the camera would go to like a a random location. It would make a scan, would write it down, and then it would mark this location as visited. So over time, when he would like arrive at the same location, he would say, "Oh, I've been here already. Don't make a scan." Of course, at the end of the scan, uh, when like let's say 99% is filled in, it would take a, a little while for the software to figure out which places are free, I guess. Um, but this approach wouldn't work because the memory is too small. So instead, I used um, Find the word. Oh yeah. So I used a system that um, that generates a random position um, 
yeah, that generates a random uh, known position. So it's called permutations. So for example, if you have this function, it's something mathematical. I don't know anything of mathematical things. Uh, but for example, if you have a function and you you you, um, you start with a range from, from 1 to 10, for example, if you feed it 2, it will give you 7. If you feed it 3, it will give you 5. If you give it uh, 4, it will give you 9. Uh, in, a, in a very kind of weird way. Uh, but if you give it um, the same number, the same output will appear again. So it's not random. It's, it's just shuffling the cards, really. And if you overlay a few of these functions, then you get uh, the impression that it's uh, random. This is without the overlaying, uh, so you can see there's like clearly structures appearing. So it kind of, it's kind of mirrored in the, in the middle always. Uh, so it's, this is kind of a, a pseudo-random pseudo approach. Uh, this is the same image, but then a bit bigger. So I, I just plotted the outcome of the formulas just to have a, have a sort of feel for what, what, what is the function doing. And I quite like the result as well. Um, for example, <laughs> this image seems to be more, um, uh, yeah, more equally distributed, uh, but it's not really the case. <laughs> for example, do you notice those? It's mirrored. So here, the next image, I just mirror the right half. I flip it upside down, to only the right half. Can you see it? Now it's purely symmetrical. You can feel it, eh, the symmetry. Um, although the software was, uh, when the software was finished, uh, I thought I can make scans in, in a random fashion right now. Uh, but I was wrong again. Because there is some shaft play on the on the motors, um, and uh, with with like scanning line per line, that's okay. Because now I I go back like this, I go back, and then I go a little bit too far, and then I uh, go to zero again, just to get rid of this shaft play. But for the random images, uh, I would need some kind of preload system that put my camera to put the motors always on the same side of this uh, shaft play. So I was uh, oops, I was looking into this kind of um, Springs. This is a small one. On the camera right now, there is a, a, a spring that is way bigger. Um, it took a while to figure out uh, and, uh, the torque and all these kind of stuff. Uh, because I want to have like a, a working range of around 180 degrees to have to give me some freedom, but it's not too too easy to find springs. You you need a really large spring to to give you a, uh, an acceptable tension over this whole range. Again, first image of the random scanning. You can see it's clearly very different than the others. Again, second scan. I really like how, uh, yeah, the distribution of it, the, the feel of it. But then it was like months and months of trying to get it more sharp, so it was not very easy. Uh, anyway, I jumped. So this was a part of the the random kind of thing. Um, I now I'm not scanning randomly. Because, as you can imagine, instead of scanning pixel, 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 um, par, uh, uh, every pixel uh, after each other, just in one line, it's pretty quick. But if you do it in random fashion, then you have to move, slow down, wait a little while, do a scan, go somewhere else, slow down, etc. So it takes uh, um, uh, yeah, a bigger amount of time uh, for each image. For example, the same image I would make um, here um, in Let's say I, let's say the image an HD image finishes in four hour, four hours. Uh, this random image would take me around um, twenty seven days. So um, I'm gonna jump back to another image. This is just a, a room in my house, and um, um, I want to show you this because it's just a, a linear scan again, as you can see with the little lines. This is for, for probably me passing by, going to the toilet, and then up, up there as well. Uh, so you have these folds again. Uh, but I wanted to show you this. This is one image, and this is the same image, but interpreted in a different way. So we go back to the list of, of numbers, and that's a digital file. This stays the same, so there's nothing moving in the image. It's only the, the 
the way it's interpreted, the way, uh, so now I say, in, in everything that's in front is light, and everything that's, let's say, one meter away is dark, and everything in between is a, a gradient in between. It's different here. The distance is, uh, is bigger. So after a while, I, I thought, um, this is very useful. This is, for example, a scan I made. Uh, I was invited by um, uh, do, 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 Céline Prouvé in uh, Cinéma Aventure to make a scan there. I quite like the idea of the camera being also a projector, which is actually true because it shines its own light. But the result here was very um, uh, was a very strange image that yeah you kind of have to in interpret what's going on. So you have a foreground, like all these kind of things, there's a foreground and now you have this section. In the foreground you can easily see this is the camera with the lens, some stuff around it, this is a, an arm, like a metallic arm or something. You see all these like difference, these, these different lines. Um, I think, I'm not sure, but I think it, it is because the lighting conditions in the room changed pretty quickly, or temperature, could be. And then here you can see, the, the most clear thing you can see is the, the tripod standing over here with the camera itself. So it's just a mirror, it's looking at itself. Except for this band. So this image has some kind of roughness around it. Um, maybe the projection smooths it a, a little bit. But another, uh, another interpretation of the same, the same scan is giving me this. Uh, so now I just interpret, uh, um, I, I change the let's say, virtual lighting uh, instead of the foreground to like something that's way more uh, further away. And as you can see, it's super, super smooth and it's very photorealistic. You can see a door here, some seats um, from the cinema hall itself. Um, so I'm really puzzled why the foreground is, uh, is so rough and the background is so smooth. I think I have to wrap up here. Um, Okay, I'll finish with with one result, with one Im with one video that I scanned. So instead of uh, interpreting the image uh, a few times, I can do this like 25 times per second, and then you get a. Can you dim the light maybe? So if you do it like uh, quite often, then you get an animation, and you get like something like this. I showed this in the exhibition medium of everything in, in the School of Arts. So this was a scan taken in the Zwarte Saal um, from the School of Arts building in the center of Ghent. So now the, the, at the moment the scan was ta uh, taken. Uh, the windows were all like shut from the outside with wooden panels, so there was pitch black inside. The scan lasted for four days. And as you can see, there is like this noise band here and here. And I think it's like... Uh, those must have been the nights, because I know when I started. So this is night, the first night, the second night. And I'm kind of puzzled where there's no third one here. It's probably something with temperature. So anyway, so now I'm scanning, uh, going places and scanning stuff. For example, um, this is my uh, almost last scan, second to last scan. It's a scan that is a, a lot f further away, so it took a lot longer to make. It was 14 days. Um, so I'll show you. It, it's not an animation, but I'll show you some sections of it. 
it's also again really rough because the because of the distance you get this kind of posterizing effect but i quite like the uh, these images uh, very much an attempt to 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 capture something and this is finally uh, my last image um this was the, the camera was standing on the on the balcony of uh, Diana uh, from Imal, uh, and was looking down uh, at a part of the city there, the, the fire, firefighters, um, and something went wrong, uh, and I'm not sure what, but uh, this is the most information I can get out of the, the image, the data, um, and the camera didn't work uh, at all anymore, uh, so I ended up with this kind of thing again. Uh, so thank you. If, if there are questions, or maybe later. that uh, uh, Elias continues to work now and will present the result of this project uh, in November during a joint uh, exhibition of Wertank and Overton. So please come back then.